So Brian Driscoll of Superpowered Customs, he attempted to do some really, really cool things that uh, have not been done before. And um, we were able to get some very, very cool accessories for a bat cave as a result of that. Um, as you can see here, he has made uh, some of the all time favorites of the bat cave, all time favorite trophies. And um, I'm gonna walk through all of them, uh, spend a little bit of time, probably more on the Jason Todd Memorial than anything else, but. Uh, some very cool stuff. So first up, we have a penguin. Uh, penguin, uh, I think, I cannot remember, by the way, every single thing or every single storyline these were from, with the exception of the Robin one. But we do have one of Penguin's Penguins. And, um, you know, fairly fun to paint, easy to paint. Uh, the, the pedestal comes separate, but I just super glued into that so it would make it easier to, to uh, move it around as a, as a single accessory. Um, on top of that, we have Jaro. So... I know that there's Starro and then apparently there's Jaro, which is slightly different. You can probably see my paint apps. I tried to match the paint apps as much as I possibly could. Hard to do, but um, it's a decent representation of um, Jaro slash Starro. And then uh, in the back, we have the giant penny. And, uh, you know, normally I probably would have gone out and spray painted that, spray painted that. But where I live, it's, it's very, very cold as it is throughout most of the U.S. right now. So not really an option to be able to spray paint that um, in an environment that... Uh, was well ventilated and warmer than 40 degrees. So uh, I painted this manually by hand. And as you can see, you've got kind of the nice one cent uh, penny on the back. And um, you have the, the 1945 year on the front, uh, consistent with, I believe that is the same one as in the comics. It was either 45 or 47. I think it's 45. He's pretty accurate with details. One thing I love about Brian is he loves the source material. And... Um, is as well read in DC history as anybody. So love that he uh, he's created all these things. Now we can get to the Robin Memorial next. Um, I really loved the sculpt that he did. Um, might be a little bit hard to see. I know got a little bit of a glare. And I think you can probably see Robin's mask up there at the top if I turn it the right way. Um, it's a little bit off center. I need to go back and do a little bit of work to get that centered correctly. Um, right now it is holding on um, via a twist tie, a black twist tie that kind of blends into the back. But um, you can see the, the body sculpt is great. You have uh, the Robin costume, very consistent with what you see in the comics. And again, I don't believe in the comics they had the gloves, maybe in one version. First introduced in uh, The Dark Knight Returns, we see uh, a Jason Todd memorial and you know learn sort of various pieces of that throughout the story or little pieces of that. Not much until they expanded on it later on. Um, but uh, by the way, uh, you know, it, it, this kind of comes uh, into full sort of Batman lore, um, I believe in 88 or 89, whenever they had the uh, 1-900 campaign to decide if Jason Todd lived or died. And I, I'm, actually, it was an interesting part of history. I was a part of that. I believe there were about 10,000 people that voted. I did have one. I called in. I can't remember how much it was. It was probably like $5 to call in. Um, I had one vote, and I actually voted that Jason Todd lived. I was probably more fond of the earlier Jason Todd, even though he resembled almost exactly in origin um, Dick Grayson, but was more fond of that character than the one they sort of retconned later on, but really thought that he should live and survive. And uh, he only died off by, I believe, 50, 60 votes. You know, the, so the votes swayed in that direction, ended up being a big controversy. I believe Jim Starlin either quit or was terminated over that, the writer. But um, this started showing up more consistently in comics, the, the Robin Memorial. And um, I've seen a couple different versions of this online, at least one different version, and I believe someone else painted it silver. I just decided to paint it black to go with the memorial theme. Um, very, very well done overall. Uh, it's it's a little bit hard to make sure you get um, the, the, so I don't know if you can see this or not, but he has an acetate um, film that basically slides into this. And he actually created a really cool mechanism on the back to get this to slide in. The only challenge I had was that I'm a little bit uh, klutzy fingered. So it was a little bit hard for me to get it into the grooves in here, but um, was able to uh, use kind of a putty knife and, and uh, do a little bit better job of getting that evened out so I could slide it in. Um, the top was fairly easy to put in place once that was on, once that was done. Um, so it comes in multiple parts. It comes with the top piece. It comes with this, the top or the, the backing and the bottom are sort of one piece. Um, you have to, you, the Robin figure actually pops off the back of this. And so you can do your painting there and, um, you know, 
makes it pretty straightforward for you to be able to paint this. Uh, again, love the actual Robin costume. I think you did an excellent job there. Uh, the shoes at the bottom are great. The one thing that I thought would be really cool is if you could take a light like this, a very small light, and have it sit into the top. This is probably the smallest thing I could find. Unfortunately, it's just a bit too big um, for this particular version. But if any of you know of a great lighting option for something like this, I think it would be awesome to be able to have a very small light come in from the top. And again, sorry for the glare. I know you're getting a little bit of it. But, um, <clears throat> you know, again, a really, really cool memorial. And it says in memory of Rob and a good soldier. I didn't really spend too much time trying to make the good soldier jump out on here. I probably could have sanded it down and cleaned it up a little bit, but I just love the look of this. So uh, highly recommend it. Love what Brian had, you know, generally really love all the stuff that Brian does. Um, he's actually getting better and better and uh, his sculpts are really, really top notch. Again, I tell people all the time, but uh, Brian, his stuff is really what helped me learn how to paint. And I'm not an incredible painter, but at least I'm, um, you know, acceptable in my own right. I can at least tolerate my own stuff. So I give a lot of credit to Brian for being able to help me do that. And one of the reasons I'm able to do that is because he creates very, very clear and distinct lines on figures so that you can easily paint areas. So love his stuff. Um, love the ability to, to get something like this, which is great. Um, I, some of you have seen the pictures of my bat cave. It's a modified Batman versus Superman bat cave. And I've added these things to that. Um, I'll be sharing more on that later, but highly recommend it. Uh, I'll leave a link in the um, comments where you can go and purchase this from Superpower Customs. So leave your comments below and subscribe to the channel. Thanks.